when people go around their day, they'll ask, um, so I go to work every day, take care of my kids, all this going on. And there's forces here that are invading and that, you know, there's fights maybe going on even between ETs, as you just said. So why is it that I can't see any of that? Why is it that all of that is so invisible to me? Is it because my, my higher senses, higher senses, my other senses have not been activated or is it because it's, it's, it is really hidden or why can't I see what's going on? There is a huge effort to keep that information hidden. There is a huge uh, program that is being carried out for most people, males and females, all around the world to keep people kind of subservient. Um, and, and most people are very cooperative. And so it's easy, it's easier to just cooperate than it is to, you know, cause trouble and get into somebody's face. Um, but the, a lot of why people can't see is because they never were taught to go exploring into different frequency zones. They ha their brain has been trained to just see <coughs> very few frequency zones. Um, alpha, beta, theta, uh, maybe a little bit of high beta. Um, almost nobody goes into gamma. Or if they do, they really don't trust what they see, what they know there. When kundalini happens, your brain gets rewired and you do have access to other frequency zones and that is a huge benefit. It is a, it is a huge boost in terms of the breadth and the depth of your perception. But we could easily train children to go to those places to report what they see and give them the language that informs them this is what you're looking at this is what you're seeing and to bring them into a place where they learn how to use those frequencies and how to um how to go even further i think in this particular reality system the couple things I can do are a pittance compared to what I have been able to do in other zones, in, in other places. Um, and that is that is the nature of a physical reality. And, and yet we were pretty confined by our physicality. And most people don't, there's still a question for, for the huge majority of people as to, uh, does life continue after death? They haven't even answered that question, let alone gotten outside the box of, uh, you know, perceptions, the few frequencies that we, that we operate at as we manage our world. Most people just stay in beta. That's it. So somewhere between 12 and and 15 or maybe 18 cycles per second, you get above 20, your perception starts changing. Um, and you get below 12, you're, you're, then your perception starts changing as well. So we're in this very narrow band, um, and I'm not confined to that. It's just that simple. So, and I think that as a whole, the population, the human energy system is designed to unfold just like mine did. And it doesn't happen for millions and millions and millions of people. And I, I'm sorry about that. I'm just, I'm like, oh, wow, that's too bad. We have, we are designed to unfold and to evolve. And once that a mass of energy moves through and reorganizes brain and core, then you're different and you have different skills and different abilities. So we could incorporate that into our school system and begin to develop people. Hands down, it, we, would, we would evolve more in the next hundred years than we've done in the last 5,000. Um, because it does relate to what we're experiencing as a people. And right now we are entering into a pretty deep crisis zone. Um, that's pretty obvious. And how we handle that is going to determine 
how what the experience becomes and how it unfolds we're in that emergency right now i am very very conscious of how people can believe they're doing something that's that they need to be doing or that's right and the suffering that they cause other people is outrageous um just awful awful things are, are done and it isn't about right or just or fair it isn't about any of those things it's about who's got the power and so i have been very very conscious of not wanting people who suddenly are afraid of ets to come after me so that's why i haven't said anything but right I now you feel like that. the topic is very open like people are talking very um more openly about it now do you feel that uh, yeah they are and i and that's how it was right before both of those burnings people were beginning to move out into new thinking and boom down and everything changed just like that and the whole um city just all of a sudden is up in arms about you and it doesn't matter who knew you they're not speaking up to save your ass that's for sure because they're trying to save theirs and it's an awful kind of experience and the donking oh my god that was just uh, that was awful so um they you know they put you under water and and they their that their attitude is well if she doesn't drown we know she's a witch and if she drowns well then she's not a witch <laughs> i was like what kind of logic is that um and and i knew i remembered that when i was in the second grade reading a story about pioneer colonial days and i was second second grade <laughs> that whole memory came out even the bonnet i was wearing was, oh, just it was awful so yeah those well, red-haired women they were dangerous yeah. <laughs> and they were part of the um the group that migrated from india and the eastern like pakistan and all that they migrated all the way to ireland where they became the picts and um and they they had red hair curly red hair a lot of them and they were extremely psychic and intuitive and they practiced that and I they the Christians really have done us a, a huge disservice in terms of taking us backward in, in in our development. The Christians have been a huge uh, obstacle to the development of consciousness. The gentleman that wrote to me from Patreon um, said, "Did you know that the name Kelly is the most used surname in?" Uh, Ireland and I yeah. wrote back I said no I didn't know that but here's what I did know that the, those Irish people migrated from the middle Asian or mid Asian area all the way they were they were originally worshipers of the goddess Kali and they came to Ireland brought that whole religion with them and kelly is the irish derivative it became those who were worshipers of kelly became the old kelly's and then just kelly and so i'm from that line in my through my father so i don't understand this kelly is still worshipped in india yeah the lord, right. the lord is it's a female um, yeah, but the Christians stamped all of that. With the whole story of uh, who is the guy St. Patrick who went to yeah. Ireland and ridded, got rid of all the snakes. Those were all of the um, Cali worshippers. So they were the pagans, the goddess worshippers, and their symbol was the snake. Um, and that's how that whole story that you know Patrick didn't really get rid of any snakes. He got rid of all of the um those who worshiped kali the goddess so what i find very interesting is that the, the in, in the indian and we talked a little bit about this the, and it sounds a very in, ignorant question but the indian race line is very indian i mean there's when apparently they they came and in, not invaded but took over there was not white people so how is it that they could be fair-skinned freckled red-haired people in that area 
because that's how they were descended from the Mongolians and they had a whole strain of red-haired people, white-skinned red-haired people. They were the gods of that culture. And Absolutely. what has happened actually is that the Indian people migrated north as the Mongolian culture went down. And over thousands of years, you get a selection. The people who will survive are the people who are paying attention and whose consciousness is a little more expansive. Typically, they have a better chance of surviving than those who are not paying attention and who aren't prepared and who uh, get angry and cause fights and then get killed in the fight. And so there's a kind of a process of natural selection that, and that, um, plus, you know, you get any, any sort of uh, gen genetic, uh, you know, thing coming down the pike that um, it can show up the minute <laughs> there's, you can, let's just say you can tweak the, the genetics of a, of an embryo and bring out something that would then affect the consciousness deeply. So um, that whole genetic thing, that is amazing. Oh my gosh. It's, uh, there's some things I could say about that. <laughs> the, that the gen genetic structure is, and this was something that I was, this is part of the frequency thing that I learned with the little men in brown robes. Um, they actually had me <laughs> looking at the changes in an embryo when they played different tones and music to that embryo. And, and the, the results were stunning. The skin color changed, the hair changed, the eye color, the, every, the, how tall, how short, how broad, bone structure, everything was dependent. And then once that embryo was um, was born, once that child was born, then it stayed right in the, I'm going to say, the light structure of the mother and the father. So then it took on more of a, uh, what do you call that? The social, the social frequencies began to have their impact. And sometimes even with a, an embryo that had been, affected to be tall and red-haired, we'll say, I'll just make this up, um, would be short and the eyes would darken and the hair would be dark um, or blonde or whatever. And then you have also some of the ETs doing some hybridization. Um, that gets in there uh, and, and that, and people don't know that that's happening. Um, but the capacity to remove an embryo uh, and, and tweak it and put it back is one of the things. And the capacity to tweak genetics and to know what each frequency does, that's part of that uh, genetic knowledge that a, a lot of ETs have developed. And we are just now mapping the genome and saying, oh, look at this. What can we do with this? And they're talking about splicing. And I'm like, okay, you guys are really primitive. They don't need to splice anything. They just need to know how to use frequencies to trigger certain pattern sets in, those, um, in the genetic material, the G, A, guanine, I uh, forget what they are now. Um, and you trigger certain patterns and voila. You get a certain kind of body and color, and you even can set the consciousness and and pre-program that consciousness before it's born to have a certain memories that are implanted in that. In the same way that they can, they are very good with tweaking frequencies because frequency controls or determines feeling and consciousness. So if you because. Um, a lot of people have talked about this, about um, the, the ETs, like there's hybridization program going on. How does that manifest? Well, there are clusters, I'll call them clusters, in certain villages here and there around the planet where almost everybody is a hybrid and they can tweak how much of a hybrid 
and and what that does is make those villages who are typically very resilient very they're sustainable they're not caught up in the new technology of the west the new lifestyles of the west which is very fragile and very unsustainable and the people are not very healthy so they don't hybridize those people they go into mm, primitive more uh, simpler lifestyles and villages where people are a little more sturdy and they're more likely to survive because they're closer to the earth um, and they understand natural systems and etc cetera, etc cetera. and so there are um, there are some uh, children in and there are clusters here and there's some in South America some in the Himalayan mountain area some in the Mongolia area some among the Uyghurs 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 however you say that Uyghurs um, some in China there are not a lot there's maybe a few in the US but there's the people are so fragile in the US um, and so I'm, this is going to sound like an insult, and I don't mean it to be an insult, but they would never tolerate the kinds of consciousness that a, a hybrid child would bring to a situation um, because they're the parents, it would be hard to find parents who could nurture that kind of consciousness. And if they find one, then the partner is a, an idiot or a jerk or a bully or whatever, then you stand the chance of ruining the hybrid consciousness and they're not going to do that. So most of the hybrid programs are elsewhere. And if we go down, they will survive and they will spread gradually, become more and more dominant and more and more prominent. And that's really what's happening. There have been some experiments. Um, I can't think of her name. A uh, woman that I that I communicated with, whose daughter was um, her daughter died because her daughter had diabetes. But she actually wrote a book. The the book was named Rachel's Eyes. And the um, the woman who wrote that, or the, the woman whose story was told in that book, is the woman that I communicated with. Um, and the she agreed to take on a student. Her daughter was just going to college, and she agreed to take on this student that was going to go to school with her daughter, and, and they, she was going to just kind of support that kind of like a what do you call it when you have a student goes from one country to another visiting student or something like that and um, in the story in Rachel's eyes I don't know if you've read it or even heard of it but um, wow the the gal Rachel was a human ET hybrid and she was placed in this home with this woman and her daughter by the military. And the story is phenomenal. It is, the woman did not recognize at first what was happening. Her daughter was going blind because of diabetes. And I think the daughter died when she was in her early 30s of diabetes. But after this gal disappeared, the, the Rachel eventually disappeared. Um, the day that she left, she said, "I've I've left a, a gift for for you." She was talking to her the other young woman, the daughter who was going to uh, college and who had needed help because she couldn't see. All of a sudden, her sight was back. And that is one of the things that ETs are very, very careful with is vision. And, and you'll hear me talk about my eyes, or I'm a student of the eyes, or I, that's what I'm learning to develop, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I would recommend that book. It is, uh, it it's a, just gives you a little tiny window into the hybrid 
programs that have been tried here, most of them have not worked very well. And so most of the hybridization programs are being done in places other than Western, modern, first world countries. And then some of them, there's some, there's some. I think there's some in Colorado. Previously, when we talked about, okay, yes, there are ETs here and there are hybridization program going on, are yeah. they more malevolent or benevolent to try to assist the current humanity? Or is it more of a way, because a lot of people talk that there is, it's more like a takeover, like they're just taking over the human race. And it's not something like what, the way you're talking about it, it's just a way to ensure that the creation of, of the human race on this reality system continues to evolve if we screw up. So, and I think that's a, kind of. that's a good plan, kind of. Yeah, it's mostly benevolent. Um, they do not, many of the ETs do not think that we are going to survive. Why? Because we have not developed consciousness, and two, because we have not um, come together to be able to have technology that will get us off the planet. And, and if you're tied to a planet, you're subject to whatever goes on on that planet. Hurricanes, bad storms, earthquakes, uh, plasma, micronovas, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, Whatever goes on on that planet, you're stuck with. And that those kinds of things go on on every planet. And so what we should be thinking about is how do we get, get off the planet? Maybe we want to stay around it and draw some things from it, but we, we need to be thinking about getting off the planet in order to survive, for the civilization to survive. And in order to do that, we really need to evolve a lot further. Why don't they want to come and save us? They don't want us getting all crabby and starting a fight on board their ship. Most humans can't even drive down the road together, let alone get in an enclosed space and be there for six months or six years or six decades or whatever. So here we are. <laughs> and we have a long way to go. And, okay. and we never, we don't know how to look at what's coming out of his mouth or her mouth is about them. Even if they're saying crap about you, it's not about you. It's they're showing you what they are, who they are, how they perceive. You, you, that's one of the things that you, you know, that you teach when you are a mother figure in another culture, in another planetary system. It's not about what's coming at you. It's about the person who's putting that at you. And yeah, you might have to defend yourself from physical harm or being hurt, but um, it's that it's telling you what that other person is thinking and feeling, etc. And then you study that and you work with that and you transform that. You learn how to transform that. Um, it's a long, it's a long story, but, uh, probably not best to go there at this point in time because at at this point we really need to mother ourselves um, and to be able to move into a, a much higher level of maturity and wisdom and grace than what we have achieved so far. Yeah, I don't want to sound judgmental, but that's where it's at. That's where it's at. <laughs>